and welcome, welcome back. back. And as was mentioned earlier in the show, a part of our Christmas programming definitely includes safety tips. And this time we're going to be talking to electrician from Dave's AC World, David Betancourt. Good morning and hey. welcome. Good morning, guys. Good morning. Now, David, we know uh, you are definitely one of the go-to persons to talk about energy saving. And at this time of the year where everybody wants to have all the pretty lights up, uh, what would you say is uh, your number one suggestion in terms of, first of all, safety? Um, safety. Um, first of all, I know everybody wants to decorate the house and put on all these pretty lights. Um, and on most packaging, all packaging of lights, they usually tell you the recommended amount of lights you can plug into each other. Um, just um, recently, I passed in one of my friends' house and they're putting up lights. I stopped in and this guy is trying to figure out why this light's not working. Mm -hmm. And so I looked at it and he had like seven of the Christmas lights plugged, in plugged into each other. And he said, this is the same we did, way we did last year. And it's, um, it was on a tree, one of those trees that has um, Sometimes has some dry leaves. Well, right now the leaves are a little green because we got the rain and stuff. Mm -hmm. But um, these things recommended um, it was maximum three of these lights to plug in, and he had seven. You know, I never knew that. Yeah. So you're talking about string sets. Yeah. So you should only string three, uh, three yeah. hundred light packages Correct. together. That, that's what it's recommended, wow. and he had like seven. Yeah. May I have to go back and is, check my is, tree? Is there a point where? they actually don't function or it's oh, it might, in his case he, he just didn't have one of them plug in there were so many of them he just didn't have one of them plug in yeah. that's so it won't it won't stop work what it will do it can burn the wires yeah. and when the wire get overheated and burn that's where if something close that close by to it can catch fire and there where your place can burn up i didn't think so so really and truly even if you string six together and they still work, it's a fire hazard That's because right. it's, it's uh, too much for, for one for line, no? For yeah. the wire, for the wire itself, yeah. no? Yeah. Um, not for the outlet in the socket in the wall. The socket in the wall can hold up to maybe like, like 15 of them. Mm -hmm. uh, well, not recommend, but I'll say maximum about 12. But for the, for the actual, the light card, if you notice the cards for the lights are very thin. Mm -hmm. So these are, that's where, where the maximum is for three. That's really important. For, I, I had no idea. I didn't read the package probably. <laughs> <laughs> we don't. We <laughs> don't. We usually when it doesn't work, then we go back to the package. Well, because all of them have the plugs to plug into each other, so yeah. you just assume. That's right. So that's a very, um, that's a very important tip that you're putting yeah. out to people. Three strings together. That, that would be your maximum to stay safe. Yeah. Yeah. Now, even with the use of a power strip, what's your recommendation there? Because that some people immediately say, oh, I'm going to safeguard it. I'm going to put it on a power strip. Well, that's the ideal thing, actually. You use a power strip, and then you plug in maximum three into each plug of the power strip. Mm -hmm. So you don't have them connecting mm -hmm. one of the other, but you have a power strip that can handle the load. Like I said, the outlet can handle about 12 of them. So you plug in your power strip in the outlet, and then you could... Start your them up. Yeah, that's right. So a power strip is, advice, is, is is probably one of the best ways to go. That's right. Yeah. Um, not an electrical cord? No, <laughs> the electrical cord um, only has one end, mm -hmm. so it will end up with the same thing, unless you use like three or four electrical cord. Okay. And that's one of the things I want to ask you about, because people buy the extension cords anywhere. The cheaper, the better. What's your recommendation in terms of looking at what's a good extension cord? Um, for all extension cord, it has the amount of amperage you could use, you should, the maximum amount of amperage you could use on an extension cord. So when it, what it, for whatever use you are using it for, all equipment shows how much amperage the equipment use. So you'll be able to look at the, the label on the, if it's a, if it's a light fixture, it's a, um, it's a vacuum, whatever it is, it shows how much electricity a, the equipment use. Therefore, you could look at the, the extension cord you're buying and see what's the rated amperage. That's where you go by. Um, for example, the small, cheaper ones like you're talking about, the maximum amps is 7 amps. And some people use that for a vacuum, and a vacuum uses like 8 amps. It will work, but you will get the extension cord real hot. 
and that these are things that cause fire. So um, you really want to, to not only now in the Christmas season looking at how much load in uh, amperage. I know people say, well, Dave, I'm not an electrician, so I'm not familiar mm -hmm. with the term what amperage is. But you, it's um, like dollars and cents. You go to the shop, it's, if the thing is five dollars, you could spend five dollars. So if you think mark five amps, you look at the extension card and it says five amps. Um, you don't want you won't want to use something that says five amps. It use five amps, and then you want to buy something that rated for five amps. No, it will have a maximum amps on it. So if it says maximum five, if some will say I rated for fifteen amps, but maximum five amps. You won't looking at the maximum amount of amperage you could use. Yeah. That's, that's a good thing for people to learn. So you check your electrical cords and they come with different ampage, right? Yeah. The cheaper it is, the less ampage, the more than likely mm -hmm. you could use. <clears throat> so the average uh, extension cord, sorry, that people use is about what? The average is five? Fifteen. Fifteen? Yeah. With a max of five or fifteen? Um, it's um, for a maximum, fifteen would probably you could use like twelve. Okay. But the, the point is, um, it, let me answer, try to answer that question a little better. Um, the cheap ones them are about seven. Okay. So that, that and I guess that most people will buy the cheap ones. Cheaper so ones, yeah. To, uh, and to what what type of appliances can that uh, can be used on that? Um, almost anything. Okay. Um, um your, your TV, your um, your radio, your um, lights. Mm -hmm. For instance, um, um, small stuff, fans and stuff. Okay. The thing, the, there's only like five or six things that really pull a lot of electricity in a house. Um, that would be microwave. That should not be used on an extension card because the microwave uses 12 amps. Okay. Um, iron, iron use about the same thing. Um, washing machine. Um, your fridge is not recommended to use on an extension card. On, however, if you use a, a solid extension card for like 15 amps. Um, dryer. Dryer is definitely not on an extension card. Um, so your big appliances yeah. definitely don't, don't use any extension. Um, the, uh, as I mentioned, the vacuum. The, the vacuum, vacuum uses a lot. The next thing that uses a lot of electricity, but people don't use it often in the house is the um, air compressors. Are the pressure washers? Okay. Yeah, if you're going to use a pressure washer and you need it to use an extension card, then you need to check the amperage for sure. Okay. Now, um, going in the same uh, conversation with extension cords, because the length of the extension cord does that really matter, or it's only the amperage that you're looking at? Because you know you have some maybe it's six foot, you have twelve, you have longer. Um. Once it's over a hundred feet, then the, the, the voltage drops, therefore the, there's more amperage. So you don't want to get, definitely don't want to get an extension card more than a fi more than hundred feet and use something else without asking an electrician to do the calculation to see how much voltage drop you had. Mm. But 10, 15, 25 feet is okay. Now let's talk outdoor light. One of the fears people have is obviously it's exposed to the elements and we've been getting quite a bit of rain. How do you uh, ensure that your outdoor lights are connected to electricity, but safe? Um, well, definitely you don't want to be connecting it while you're in <laughs> the water. That's, and I know you're not asking that, but I just yeah. want to No, but that's good, good reminder. Um, the, you, everything like these, most of them, all of them are made for the outdoor. Yeah. The water won't affect it from mm -hmm. um, stop working and stuff um so there's no real concern there of plugging in outside unless there's a peeled wire or something of that sort correct yeah mm -hmm. and um, so check your cords yeah well um even the, the the plug where the plug where you plug the um plugs in if you want to um do a little additional safety you could get some electrical tape and wrap it up real tight but for the most part you will have no problems with water unless it's damaged. Oh, now, I, I'll ask another thing because you, you mentioned the plugs just now. Yeah. Another thing that people like to do is if it comes with a three prong, but I only have a extension cord that connects with uh, just two, I either break it off or I try and fit it into the <laughs> um, extension cord in a way that that third wow. prong is just not engaged. Okay. Why is that important for people to consider? Well, 
I, I was looking at that recently. Like, the council the same lights for the same lights for the guy. Um, I don't mess with Christmas tree and lights. I, <laughs> I'm not a big fan of those things. Um, but um, the same guy was looking at his one, and, and, and none of these Christmas tree lights come with that third prong, which is for the ground, mm -hmm. and then he used it for outside. Um, what a ground is for is that whenever you have a short, it helps you to trip your breaker quicker than um, if you don't have the ground, um, or if there's a short, the, the electricity goes back to the ground instead of to the person. However, these lights don't come with grounds. So definitely, if you have a peel wire or so, mm -hmm. it, you have to take, to me, you have to take an extra um, precaution when it comes to these lights, when it comes to peel or damage wires, because they don't have a ground to protection. Um, back to what you were saying for the equipment that does come with it, and people do that, what they're simply doing is um, they're putting the equipment one at risk or the, um, the wires, the, up, up another potential of fire, because if you have a short, it will take a longer while um, the let me explain let's say for example with washing machine a lot of people um, have the washing machine and it shocks them when they when it wet and they, mm -hmm. they, they're standing on the ground and it, it, they give a little tickle that what's that telling you that your your washing machine there's a high prob probability that your washing machine is not grounded meaning that you don't have the tree prong and if you do have the tree prong the ground is not connect somewhere in the outlet or in the electrical box so what, what that does is instead of the, the, the additional electricity goes to the, to the ground, it goes in the body of the machine and that's when you touch it. Um, you so can what can people do to remedy that? Make sure you call an electrician and get the okay. outlets checked and check, make sure that you have a proper ground. Okay. Um, the next thing that people observe, um, now that we're on the topic of, of that same thing, um, Many times you have your electricity bill just going up and a little bit and a little bit and a little bit and you're wondering why you're not adding anything to the house. Normally it's because of that same reason that there's a short, there's a short in your system of one equipment and it is going, um, it is going to the, it, your, your, your billing is not grounded so it's not tripping the breaker and you're losing electricity through the body of the, um, maybe through the, the building if a concrete or stuff like that. And that's where you're losing electricity. So you're wondering why your electricity keep going up, but it's simply because your, 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 the equipment is not properly grounded and it has a less short, and then you're losing electricity like that. Hmm. I, I've had people who, um, who called me and said, Dave, my bill is like $700 and it shouldn't be more than $120. Yeah. And it's simply because either somebody, like this guy, he got a guy to put a, extension on his house and they put a screw through one of the electrical wires but because the extension he didn't run no put no ground for the extension they actually was like an a garage thing like he didn't put no extent um, ground for it and there was a constant amount of electricity just going into the building hmm. yeah so if you like so if, if you, you walk see like around, a dramatic increase or a continuous increase in your electricity they will call an electrician and, and right. have them check it yeah it's, it's more likely just a, a, a damaged equipment or somebody has something that um is going towards the the body of the um like the, like if they put the if the wire drop off of a screw for the outlet yeah. it could be touching the ground but because it doesn't have a the billing is not grounded or the area is not grounded it didn't trip the breaker yeah. and then you don't know you have a real problem it's yeah. just sending electricity to the ground let's oh. talk about other fire hazards that you see um when you move around the city or around the country this time of year what are thing, pe things that people are doing that you'd like to advise them on how to be safe um what comes to my mind first without thinking about just this time of the year is um we always have a lot of house fires and they, they always attribute Sorry. it to um electrical right um, what I've observed in the past 25 years doing electrical, um, no, we, we do air conditioning too, right? And we service air conditioning. But the reason why we service air conditioning because the air conditioning stopped working and people call us and say it's not working and they need to get it addressed. With electrical, nobody service electrical mm. because it's not something that, that accumulates dirt and stuff like that and you need to clean it to get it working again. It still works. What it does is take their electricity bill higher 
or um, it could cause a fire. How? Um, especially the outlets for that was in like maybe 15, 20 years ago. The outlets they become um, what you call it like like crystallize mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and they become weak. You plug you plug in it and then they fall apart in your hands. Once you see one of your outlets in your house falling apart in your hands, call an electrician and get them to change all the outlets. You, you don't want to wait till then. Maybe you just want to just look at it and see how they look. Um, what happened is, with, especially on busy streets, the vehicles, they vibrate your house without you. Maybe some house feels it and some don't. But one way or the other, they are vibrating your house. And then the screws, after 15, 20 years, the screws, maybe not even that often because... Um, one particular business that I work for, I service their electrical, and I do it like every two to three years. And every time we go there, we find slot connections on the screws. So eventually, the screws they walk back, and people don't service the electrical. And it's very, it should be very cheap in the sense of um, it just, it's just to pull out the outlet, tighten all the screws, and put it in back. So it's not a big job, and we could do it safely by just turning off the breakers. Meaning so the, the, the electrician don't have to feel like he has to charge a lot because um, because it's so dangerous to do it. So, so no. let me ask, what happens if you don't service uh, these electrical outlets? Um, what happens eventually, two things. You, you don't notice that the, elect the outlets are falling apart and they need to change. And two, the, the, once you have a slot connection, anytime you have a slot connection, it does two things. It over it, um, it pulls more electricity, and it overheats. Mm. It, it start heating up because you're you're having something that like like you ever see something sparks when you plug in something. Yeah. Okay, so that's what you have like a small spark because it's barely touching, and eventually it overheats and it, it burns into flames. Mm. Now, I, I want to ask one other thing because you you spoke about servicing, and um, you're even talking about air conditioning. Um, air conditioning on uh, extension cord? No, no. All and, right. and air conditioning should always be on an independent su power supply. Never should and be with so higher else. voltage in your regular outlet. So. Yeah. So that was the first thing I wanted to underscore. And then the whole idea of servicing again. I mean, you say generally people leave it until it breaks down. Yeah. Before, how often do you recommend that people actually service their air conditioning, even if it's working? When do you uh, do a service? Um, for air conditioning for um, business spaces, um, why is it business? Because most businesses use their air conditioning um, every day, at least six days a week. And they have traffic, so they have a lot of in and out of their, um, of their place. And so you have a lot of dust coming in. So the, the servicing of the air conditioning is mainly primarily to keep it clean and make it more, keep it efficient. Because the more dirty it is, the less airflow you get through the air condition, the more electricity, the longer it takes to cool the place, the more electricity you burn. Mm -hmm. And then the parts start overworking because it's under a strain. So for businesses, it's every three to four months. Um, for people who have air conditioning in their homes, um, if you're using it every night, then you would want to do it at least every four to five months. Mm -hmm. um, but for, like, for air condition that you have in your living room that you use occasionally, Sometimes you don't have to service it. When the, when the guy comes to do your, your room, you, you don't have to service it. You could probably skip a service or maybe skip two services. You just ask the guy to open it up and look at it and see if it needs servicing. Yeah. So it's, the, it's based on the usage. Yeah. All right. Well, um, and plugging out uh, the, the Christmas tree lights, that's mm -hmm. also one of the things. So if you have it on a power, uh, power strip. Mm -hmm. You plug out the strip or you just plug out the lights? What's your rec I know you've always spoken about plugging out appliances as a way of, of saving electricity as well. Um, saving energy, thank you. Well, yeah. for definitely I wouldn't recommend that people leave on their, their Christmas tree lights throughout the night. Mm -hmm. um, because when you, nobody's seen it, I would want to think that Christmas... Lights. But it looks pretty through the window. That's the argument for people. Everybody's sleeping at yeah. night. Take <laughs> it off when you go to sleep. Yeah. That's a very important tip. Yeah. But, um, and and the, um, you were asking me about... Uh, the, plugging, the plug, plugging, it plugging it out. Plugging yeah. it and plugging out. Um, most of these things come with switches. You, you don't want to be plugging and plugging out the stuff. If you have a okay. switch, use a switch as what it's designed for. Okay. Um, one of the 
reason that you change outlets, another reason why you change outlets is because people plug it in and plug it out. But most of these outlets, when you plug it in, it holds. And if you are always plugging in and plugging out, that makes the, the um, connection a little mm -hmm. bit um, weak. So you don't want to be plugging all the time if you don't have to. That's why you have switches. Mm -hmm. um, back to the safety of this, um, this time, um, I know that a lot of people want to be using um, using all their stuff that they don't normally use and stuff like that. Um, what 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 we we always do is to not look at things that are damaged um, and then still want to use it. Um, mm -hmm. Let me give you an example. Um, like. Uh, like a, a, a radio, mm -hmm. um, you, you, you're always hearing maybe something like on one side of it or so, and um, you're using it like that. I always recommend that you fix things before you use it halfway. Yeah. Um, there, there's a lot of things like your iron. Your iron, um, sometimes the card is broken, and so you feel like if you could bend the, the, the card like this and hold it and use it, you go ahead and use it. No, get it fixed. Yeah. Because whenever you do things that, it, it's all, like, like, like it's with life, it's always an indication that something is going wrong, and then we just want to. And it's more of a hazard. Put a band-aid. Yeah, yeah we want to put a band-aid on it. So I always, in, in times like these, you're pulling out stuff that's not working properly. Yeah. Maybe you, you haven't used your mixer all year until <laughs> Christmas time. Yeah. Check yeah. the wires Correct. first. And, and it goes see. for year round, yeah. but you know that you always fix things before you use them. My final question just has to do uh, with tips that you can tell people that you are at risk for an electrical fire. Because sometimes there are little signs that people don't see, whether it's the smell of something burning, flickering lights. Um, what are some of the tips that you are in urgent need of uh, having an electrician come to your house? Hmm. Um, definitely the burn incentive. If you smell something burn right away. Um, because I, I went to a house in right beside um, um, on the seashore, mm -hmm. where Bellevue, yeah, Bellevue, right beside it, a big, mm -hmm. pretty board house. <laughs> and um, a rat has, had bite the wires, mm -hmm. and the wires were touching, giving little sparks, and the wood was already burned, but it didn't catch fire. I think it didn't have enough oxygen to, to find it. Mm. And the, the guy said he smelled something burning but he just didn't know what it was. And we had to rip down the ceiling to see, to find the wires. Um, so definitely if you smell something burning, <laughs> you call right away. Yeah. Um, turn off your equipment, or if you could turn off, just turn off the breakers if you have to. Mm -hmm. Because normally an indication of smoke, uh, of something burning is the start of something Fire. burning. And yeah. normally it continues to burn. Um, one thing I, I recommend people to do now that I know we have a lot of houses that don't have electrical wires um, in conduits. I think there should be a reinforcement of that because we have a lot of rats. I just built my building and I found a rat in there, but we didn't finish casing up some areas. Mm -hmm. And we, we found a rat in there, so I had to finish case up and got rid of him. Uh, but we have electrical wires. And, and when you say conduits, it's, you're talking about the piping, etc., that they run the electrical wire. It's not yeah. to make it easier but it's to really protect it as yeah. well. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's ironic because um, I'm telling you that and I just finished my building and I don't have the wires in conduit. That sounds, that I, that's, I, I'm not ashamed of, but I'm, I'm saying it out loud and it, it's hitting it should me. should be a requirement. But I mean to say my building uh, like is so sealed and tight that to have rats in there, with all the windows are slide down and stuff. So for, for, for things like that, I would want to say it's a little bit harder. But um, maybe I, I should reconsider even for myself. Yeah. What happened is um, once the rats start, start biting, like in my, my building, I made sure that I didn't use anything that was wood when it comes to everything was metal and stuff like that. So you, um, you have, if rat for some reason would get in and bite the wire, it won't burn. There's nothing to burn. Everything is non burnable material. Um, but for I, I, what I see a lot is when they say it's electrical fire. <laughs> Sometimes I'm glad that they, I didn't go and fix something in that house right away because they would say it's electrician. But normally when it's electrical fire, it's either, like I said earlier, it's the outlets that are so crystallized that needs to be changed. 
or it's a rat that bite the electrical wire and the electrical wire burn, start get overheating um, because it was touching something else and catch a wood fire. And also, like you said before too, if you've had repairs and a nail actually goes into the wire, it might create problems going well, down the road. Yeah, definitely. That one make, that's the main, con main, most of the time I go and people have over consumption electricity, is that right there, somebody screw or what, something in the wire. Uh -huh. um, what I think we should do is do an, uh, <laughs> and this might sound funny, right? Do a, a nationwide il, um, extermination of rats. <laughs> Serious. If every we, we put a we, support we you put a that. week we put a week that everybody decide to start poisoning rats or two weeks, and everybody decide to start yeah. cause I would poison rats in my house in, in my neighborhood and, and stuff cause. I don't like them when they get in your cars, they could bite up your wires and stuff like that, right? I and don't they eat anything. I don't get, in, yeah. get them in my house, but if I go away and I come back for a week or so, I find them in my, in my engine for my vehicle. Mm -hmm. And so I would exterminate them. I don't see them for a little while, but after a while they come back. Mm -hmm. But if we cut, said this for this week uh, in February, from February 1st to 15th, we be in everybody. The rat extermination. Everybody. You don't have to only worry about <laughs> copper thieves. You have to worry about the rat as well messing up your electrical yeah. systems. Yeah. Uh, everybody decided to exterminate. <laughs> I, th I think we could. <laughs> All right. And, and then you make it so like, okay, t give the, um, what, Prosser. Prosser has some of the best rat, rat poison. <laughs> <laughs> You give him a, an advance, hey guy, we're going to do this next, fr next <laughs> two months. Make sure you're ordering like a, a... That in addition to your energy saving passion, you have a passion against rats <laughs> yeah. as well. We got to wrap up the segment though, right. David. So thank you very much for joining us and for sharing. Totally you know, we support fun, you. Man. We don't know if we'll ever get there, but <laughs> we got to take a break. And when we come back, we'll talk to the fire department now uh, about prevention guidelines. So stay tuned.